Well, good morning and welcome to uh, the Church 360 Unite webinar on coordinating your church communication uh, with Church 360 Unite. My name is Andrew Osborne. I'm a creative content specialist here at Concordia Technology Solutions. Uh, you can see my email address and my phone number up there. Um, anytime you have any questions or uh, need help with uh, this software or, or just would like to know more about it, give me an email or a call uh, and I'll answer those questions for you. Um, just a little background information for you. Concordia Technology Solutions is the church administration division of Concordia Publishing House. And uh, Concordia Publishing House is the publishing arm of the Lutheran Church Missouri Synod. Um, we've been around for close to 147 years. Um, this picture is of a booth we had at the 1904 World's Fair, just to give you a little bit of the uh, rich history that we have here at CPH. Um, but we also have a pretty bright future. We've been developing software for churches since 1984. Um, this is a picture of our innovation center. It's where we do a lot of our product brainstorming conversations. Um, so we have a lot of great products available right now and uh, plenty more in the works. Uh, and hopefully that'll um, be a, a good resource for churches in the, the coming years. A few housekeeping items before we get started. Um, this presentation will be about 60 minutes long. And then we'll have 30 minutes for questions and answers at the end if we need that much time. Um, the recording will be shared, so if you need to step out for a minute or if you would like to share this uh, recording with someone later on, um, it will be shared on our YouTube page and you should receive an email with a link to that. Um, and you can ask questions throughout the presentation. Um, I won't be able to answer them until the very end, uh, but I'll make sure I look through all your questions um, at the end. and. I, as I'm going through the presentation, make sure you ask them. That way you don't forget any questions that um, you'd like to get answered. Uh, let's see. So Church 360 Unite is part of our, um, our, it's a component of our Church 360 software suite. Um, and it's a, this is our complete church management solution. Church 360 Unite is the church website builder but we also have Church360 members uh, to help you manage member information. And we have Church360 Ledger to help manage church finances. Uh, and these are all part of the same suite, like I said, but they can be used independently of each other as well. Um, church360 Unite, like I said, is our church website builder. Um, it's our complete church management solution um, that helps you to uh, take care of different aspects and gives you different tools for your churches online presence. Um, some of those aspects are your website, your blog feeds, your member hub, um, where you can log in and gain information uh, about your different members. Um, you can do file sharing, it's your master church calendar, and you can do mass emails from these. And we call it Unite because it uh, really unites all of these different tools um, so that you can do all of these things from, from one place. Um, there's some things to know about Church360 Unite. Um, you can access it from anywhere. Um, it's online, so anywhere you're at with an uh, internet connection, you can access these tools. Um, the themes are mobile responsive, meaning uh, if you're on a, a tablet or even your cell phone, um, your theme should respond to that and uh, be the correct dimensions. And it's securely hosted and backed up. Um, that's managed on our end, and the, the data is backed up regularly. Um, that way, if you accidentally delete something, uh, we should be able to recover it for you uh, to an extent. If you make a ton of changes throughout the day, um, we may not catch them all. It's, I think it's whatever is set up at the end of the day will capture that. Um, but it's helpful if one day you delete something and the next day you're like, oh, I need that back. You should be able to re recover it. Um, and all of these are uh, these features are free. You get free updates, uh, free support, and free training resources. Um, so it's a great way to stay on top of what the software can do um, and learn how to utilize it to the, its full potential. And this may sound a bit like a sales pitch, uh, but I really just want to hit all of the key features. Uh, and we do have some current customers watching, uh, and hopefully this will be a little bit of training for you. I have some assumptions about those of you uh, that are attending. Um, 
one assumption is that you would be familiar with church websites at least a little bit, um, the sort of things you would want to put on your church website and uh, the things you wouldn't want to put on your church website. Uh, we could do a whole webinar about that topic, but for today, uh, we're just going to go over the features of this software. Um, another assumption is that you're new to Church 360 Unite. Um, so even if you're a current customer, uh, you may not know all of the features or may be looking to brush up on some of the uh, tips and tricks and things like that. Uh, but this presentation is more for novice users or people who haven't used the software before. Um, and another uh, another assumption is that you're interested in delegating tasks. Um, this software is great for being able to pass on uh, responsibility to people in your church um, and allow them to take the reins on certain things. I have a few goals for this webinar. The first goal is to explore all of the areas of Church 360 Unite. Um, this is an overview, so I really want to just kind of touch on everything. Um, I want to help you understand the key features. Um, even though we're going to try to hit everything, we can't go into as much detail as I would like uh, within an hour. Um, so we'll hit the key things that uh, most churches will be using uh, and how to set those up and things like that. Um, and then I would like to answer the question, how can Church 360 Unite help you communicate better with your congregation? Um, and that's really all this is, is a communication tool um, and a way to get information to people um, and get information from them. So uh, it's a great way to um, get the people in your congregation involved. Um, first, we're going to talk about roles a little bit. Um, there are a few different roles that users on your website can have. Uh, the first one we'll talk about is the administrator role. Um, and this will be different depending on your church. Sometimes that person could be a full-time church off office worker, um, like a secretary or an office manager, or even a website administrator or the pastor. Um, it really depends on your church. It, it could be a, a volunteer, but um, typically it would be someone who works for the church. Um, and we'll talk about the administrator in terms of settings and users. Um, this would be the first person you want to get set up. Uh, and you could delegate some of the things that they set up, um, but it's probably best for the church worker to do uh, or whoever the administrator is. Um, and since you're here today, you're probably one of the people that would be setting that up uh, since you're the most interested. Um, we also have the designer role. Um, this is something that could also be a volunteer, um, someone who's interested in web design or graphic design, um, or just someone who has an eye for design in general, someone like an art teacher or something like that. Um, and we'll talk about them in terms of themes and pages. We also have a publicity role. Um, this might be a full-time church worker, uh, but it's typically a volunteer, someone um, who's maybe in marketing or just is good at publicity. Um, it could also be done by the church secretary, uh, someone who's just going to get information out there. Um, and we'll talk about them in terms of feeds and lists. Next we have volunteer roles, um, like board chairperson. Um, they're almost always a volunteer, and we'll look at groups when we're talking about them and how to use the different groups. We also have ministry leaders, um, and they also use groups, but for now we're going to look at them in terms of events and the master calendar and things like that. And then lastly, we have lay members. Um, these are people who maybe aren't actively involved in leadership, but are act actively engaged in the congregation. Um, and they can view the directory and um, update their profiles and all that kind of stuff, as well as just use the general tools of the website. So that's kind of our roadmap for today. Um, so now let's jump in and get started. Let me switch over to my software here for you. Um, and again, if you have any questions as I'm going through this, make sure you ask them in the uh, uh, pane, the window, and I can answer those questions at the end of the presentation today. So now when we come in here, we're at the home screen. Um, you can see it's pretty basic and there's not a whole lot going on right now. Um, and we'll be fixing that soon. Um, but for now, uh, let's go over to settings. So up here in the top, you have to be logged in to see this bar at the top. This is our um, admin menu bar. 
So right now I'm logged in as an administrator, um, so this appears. If I was logged out, this wouldn't be there. Um, so I'll click on settings, and you can see we've got lots of different stuff on here. Um, we have our basic account information, things like church name, email, phone number, address, time zone, and this information automatically flows to the footer of every page. So if you exit out of here, you can see that it's down here at the bottom of this page and all of the other pages that would be there as well. So that's where that information comes from. It's right here in under settings. Um, we also have the calendars tab over here. Um, we'll get into this in more detail, uh, but this just shows the variety of calendars within your church website and how you set those calendars up. And again, we'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, we have the domain tab. Uh, and this is where you would go to change your subdomain. So right now, um, on this uh, website, this is our training webinars website. Um, and so the the URL is trainingwebinars.360.unite.com. Um, and when you first set your church website up, it'll be something like that, like lordoflight.360unite.com. Uh, um, and if you wanted to change it to just lordoflight.com, this is where you would do that. Um, and you can either purchase that um, through an external source or we can help you get that set up. Um, and that would take some extra steps on the back end, but our support team would be more than help, happy to help you with that. We also have um, a Google Analytics tab. Um, there's uh, not built-in anal analytics, analytics, excuse me, in Church 360 Unite, um, and that's because Google offers this free, amazing tool I mean, it's kind of the standard in the industry. Um, there's other fancier tools out there, uh, but they're much more expensive and not really worth it for churches. Um, and so we have the directions up here uh, to set up Google Analytics. Um, that's a great way for churches to track what's going on with their website. And then lastly, we have integration. Um, and this is so that if you also use um, Shepherd staff or Church 360 members, um, th that will this will pull your uh, membership database into your website um, and it just adds a little additional value uh, but we won't go into too much uh, on that today so next we're going to talk about users up here in the tab and there's a variety of different types of users um, you can see that we have a full database of people here um, this is a, a fictional database that we put together just for training purposes um, and regardless of whatever plan you have, um, you'll have an unlimited number of users. Um, however, there's only a certain number of people that you can have for administrators. These are people that have access to everything on the site. Um, and it depends on what plan you have, how many administrators you will also have. Um, but every plan at least comes with two administrators. So you can set up um, maybe the church secretary as administrator and then someone who um, does web development for your church can also be set up. Um, there's lots of different roles, um, and we'll be looking at those here, but first uh, I just want to show you can add additional people to this database really easily um, by just clicking the Add People button, and you can type in their first, last names, uh, and their email address and hit Add, or you can download a CSV template and open it up in a program like uh, Microsoft Excel, you can type in a whole list of people and add them all at once and import it back in. Um, so you can do kind of a batch add of people. Um, let's see. Um, so there's different user types, and we're going to change some of these uh, fictional people to different users, um, and I'll show you how to do that. So the first one we'll change is, I'm going to type up here his name, Jason Foreman, Freeman, excuse me. So I'll click his name, and I, I put a little check by his name. So now we can go down to um, change role. And let me see, what did I want to set? I'm going to set him up as a designer. Um, this is someone who is able to edit content and the themes, but they can't get into some of the, um, the deeper things, like the mailing lists and things like that. Um, so he has um, quite a bit of uh, things he can do on the website. Um, but he also has some restrictions. So I'll update him. And so now when I, let's refresh. And I can sort by role. And you can see I have a few administrators and I also have a few designers. And Jason was added in as one of those designers. 
Um, and this person, uh, the designer, is someone that you would want to set up pretty quickly. Um, that way they can start uh, designing your website and making it look the way you want it to. Um, so we sent him an invitation. Um, you can see his email isn't uh, in there yet, and that's because he hasn't gone in and accepted it. Um, so if after a while he doesn't, uh, doesn't respond, we can always resend the invitation. Um, next, we're going to set up um, our communications coordinator. That'd be kind of like the person in charge of publicity. Um, and if they were just going to manage content, um, you could set them up as just a pu publisher. Um, however, uh, we want to set this person up to be able to email our whole congregation. And you can only access the mailing lists, like I said, um, if you're an administrator. So I'm going to set up Tomika. I'll set her as an administrator also. So now when I refresh, she should be up here at the top of the list with our other administrators. Next, we're going to do a publisher. Um, and like I said, this is someone who just publishes content with on your, in your pages, um, other than groups, which we'll get into later. But these are just our normal um, church website pages a publisher would be able to change those. So we'll find Eva. We'll set her up as the publisher. And update that. And then next we'll uh, set up just a regular user. So this will be someone who um, just gets on the website and is able to access uh, the groups that he, he or she might be in um, and access the different things that you need to be logged in on the website to see. And we'll talk about those in a little bit here. So I'm going to type in Robert. I'll change him to a user. Update that. So now when you refresh, you can sort your roles. You can see the administrators and designers. You see all the people that aren't, uh, don't have users or any kind of role yet. Um, you can sort to the bottom and see the users and publishers. Um, and you can also invite multiple people at once. Um, so if I clicked on a few different ones, I could click change role and it'll show that I'm inviting multiple people. Um, so I could change them all to users and hit update and it would change them. Although it said I only changed one role because only one of them had an email address in the software. Um, I could find ones that do have email addresses to show you what it would look like. Um, so now it shows that you're going to add three of them. So I'll change them to users and hit update. And now when I refresh, click on roll, you can see that there's lots of users down here. Now before we jump into uh, the design aspect of your website, um, I want to talk a little bit about the activity tab here. Um, there are three things to look at within this. There's the comments. Um, and that has, that's related to the blogs and the blog feeds. And we'll look at that uh, a little bit later. There's also the event log, and that tracks all the things that happen on your site. A lot of these are things that um, we've done in previous webinars, um, but that's just a way to track uh, the changes that are made within your website. And then you can also go to your email log, um, and this just shows any emails that have been delivered from your site, um, and it helps you to monitor this whole uh, activities tab helps you to monitor your site's activities. Um, so now we'll j jump down to the designer phase. Um, so uh, like I said, you either need to be an administrator or a designer um, as your role to access this area. Um, so we'll click on themes up here. And you'll see we have 10 different themes available um, with different presets within each theme. Um, you, you might notice that there's actually 11 on here, and that's because there's a clone of one, and we'll talk about clones in a second. Um, but there's 10 uh, normal ones up here. And we'll be adding more in the distant future. Um, we've got a few that we're working on right now. And the functionality is the same across all of these, um, but the design and layout is different. So some of them may have the um, the navigation across the top, whereas ones like vertical have it going down the side. Um, so that's the main difference between the different uh, themes 
It's just the, the navigation and how everything's set up and the way they look. Um, so if you can uh, you can change your theme at any time um, at no additional cost to you. There are some website builders out there that do charge by the theme, but we know that many of our churches need to change their theme regularly um, depending on what's going on in their church um, and what time of the church year it is maybe. Um, so we try to keep it as flexible for users as we can. Um, so you're able to go in here and change the, the theme at any time and change the look of it. Um, you can also have uh, more flexibility um, if you have someone in your church who is a professional designer or knows um, code and things like that. Like I said, you can clone the themes. Um, and you would do that by selecting a theme but then hitting edit. And you'll see this, church, this theme belongs to Church 360 Unite. Um, you are not allowed to edit the files. You can create a copy of this theme and you will have full control over it. Um, so you could clone the theme and then you would be able to access the, the code and um, really get into the, the details of the theme. Um, for someone a little more intermediate uh, but who also knows a little bit of code, you could go to the, um, the advanced tab here. Sorry, I clicked the wrong one. And you can add in custom headers and scripts. Um, these are different areas where you can add um, code without actually getting into the theme and possibly screwing it up. Um, so it's a good way to, to change those things without getting too far into it. Um, we also have a new tab called Styles. This is uh, only uh, a month or two old now. Um, we've just added this. Um, and this allows you to um, keep your site from having a different look for each ministry or each page. Um, but you can create, I think it's up to somewhere around 75 different styles like this. Um, however, the more you add, the slower it loads your uh, website. So the fewer of these you have, the better it will be on your font load. Um, but these just give you a consistent look across your site uh, and uh, help you to keep your ministries all kind of in order and looking the same. Um, to add one, you would just click Add Style, um, and you can change what kind it is, either a block or an inline. Um, and then you can get into all the details here with changing the the style, the uh, font family, or the style, um, like bold or italic, um, the size, the text decoration, um, and even the color. So there's lots of different options. You can add some padding and things like that for the the headers that you would use. Um, so you can uh, you can create any of these different kind of styles that you can apply to your pages. Um, and we also have the Customize tab over here. Um, and this gives you um, some extra flexibility for people that don't know any kind of coding and things like that, but would like to tweak the site to make it look a little different. Um, each of our themes have different uh, presets in this area. This one that we're using right now only has about five different areas that you can change. Um, but some of them have up to like 10 or 11 that you can um, tweak the colors and um, the fonts and things like that. Um, so for now, actually, we are going to, um, I want to change my header here. So right now it's just text of our, the name of our church. Um, but if you have a logo that you wanted to put there, you could do that here by going to Banner and clicking Browse. And I already have it uploaded, so it appears right here. But if you didn't have it uploaded yet, you would just click Upload and then find it on your computer. Um, so for now, I'll just click that and hit Save Changes. And you can see that it changes to our logo right there. Um, so it's pretty easy to get that all added in there. Um, again, within Customize, you can change background colors, heading colors, accent colors, fonts. Um, you could place the logo. Uh, and at the end, you would just save the changes, and that would um, keep that all there for you. Um, so now that we have our theme all set up and our designer made it look the way we want it to, we can go in and actually start adding content. Um, so to do that, you have to be at least a publisher, but you could also be a designer or an administrator. Um, and when you log in as a publisher, this little tab will appear here, um, the Edit Page tab. So you would click on that. You can see you can change the layout of your website. So if you wanted just one long uh, text box, you could add that in there. You could do columns, 
of different sizes. You can add a, a row at the top. Um, I like this row at the top and three columns underneath, so we'll save it to that one. Um, you also have some different settings over here. You could change the status from published to draft if you needed to work on a page without people um, seeing it, like under construction. Um, you can change the URL, you can change the page title and the meta description, and these are things that are important for Google Analytics um, and uh, helping your website show up in Google when people search for it. Um, so it's important to have the, the name and description for each page. Um, so now when we have this open, you can see we can highlight these boxes and can edit them. Um, and when you click within the, uh, the cell here, you see this pops up, and this is called our WYSIWYG editor, and that stands for what you see is what you get. Um, and it's pretty straightforward. You can just start typing. Um, so I'll put text here. Um, and you can see it, it comes in in the style that we've already determined. Um, you can click styles here to change it from heading one to heading two if you wanted. Um, and these are, like I said, to keep your website looking consistent. Um, you can change things, uh, get into more details like making it bold or italicized or underlined. Um, a lot of this is pretty similar to what you would use in something like Microsoft Word, for instance. Um, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, but there's lots of other things you can do with it. Um, in this toolbar up here, there's lots of different options. Um, you can add anchors, links, images, audio and video. You can embed code. Um, you can set up tables. You can do lines. Um, you can add special characters. Um, and we give you full access to the source code. So if you did know HTML, um, you could go in here and edit it that way. Um, so for right now, we're going to actually add an image to this area. So I'll click delete that, and then I'll click the image button here. And I have some uploaded already, but again, if you didn't, you would just hit upload and find them on your computer. Um, I'm going to add our sign up for our Bible study image in. Um, you'll see it just pops right in there. If for some reason you did that and it looked uh, the image looked skewed for some reason, you would go to the you would double click on it and go to the advanced tab and you can change the width and height here. Um, you could even set them to just 100 percent and it would just fill the page um, with the correct proportions. So I'll do that and it keeps it looking the same way. Um, so it's pretty easy to add images in there. Um, you could always go in and add a link to this, and I'll show you how to do that in a little bit. And this image, um, I just wanted to mention, was created in uh, a website called Canva. Um, and I just wanted to show um, this is a great resource for churches, especially if you don't have anyone um, with a lot of graphic design background. Um, Canva gives you a lot of free resources um, and templates to set up these different images. They also sell stock photos, and I think they're only a dollar each, so that's pretty cheap when it comes to stock images. Uh, but this just gives you a good template uh, for setting up design um, temp uh, design images for your website and things like that. Um, so that's what this was made in. Um, so now that I have that in there, I can save it, and it's good to go. Uh, other ones in here. I've got a few others saved and ready to go. So I'll click the image and I'll add in our day school. This one I'll add in the get involved. And here I'll add in if it loads, the give online. Um, so it's a good way to uh, make your website look nice and professional while all you're doing is just adding some images um, that have little tags on them. Um, so Canva is a great resource for making these kind of things. So I'll save that and now when you close the edit page it uh, saves it for us and our home page is pretty much complete. Um, to uh, really get some use out of this you could uh, open edit page back out and you could add links to each of these images that way when someone clicks on them um, it takes them to the area you want to go to. Um, so if we wanted to send them to our church calendar from this um, to see what that Bible study is about, we could uh, click on the link over here, and you can change it to a URL, or you could uh, change it to a feed or page within my site. 
Um, so I'll change it to calendar. Now when you close edit page, if you click on that, I might have to refresh. Let's see. Uh, for some reason it's not doing it. Let's see what I did wrong here. I must not have saved. Um, click that, click on calendar, hit OK, save changes. All right, now let's give it a shot. And now it'll take us to our calendar. So it's pretty easy to add those links in there. Um, you just have to make sure you save when you do it. Otherwise, it won't work. Um, so that's pretty much the basics for editing a page. There's lots of details you can go into with um, the menu bar and all of these different things, different ways to set it up. Um, but that's kind of the, the overview of setting up your pages. Um, now, however, most churches have more than just a home page. Um, so if you needed to add pages, <clears throat> excuse me, that's when you would click on this pages tab up here. So we'll do that. You can see that we have all of these different um, active menu items and these are the things that appear in our menu up here. Um, so when you uh, highlight over these, these will pop down there and these are all the different pages that we use. Um, these up here are the categories that they are under and we'll talk about categories in a minute. Um, but if you go back to pages you can see again here's the pages and here's the categories they're under. Um, and uh, let's see, you can add more categories um, so basically categories are folders or just placeholders. Um, on a lot of old, older websites, um, before mobile phones and uh, tablets really got uh, big, a lot of websites would have category pages. Um, so there would be an About Us page. These would be linked under. However, now that more people are viewing uh, websites from a phone or from a tablet, um, you can't hover over, you can't click on these anymore because when you click on them on a tablet, these will pop down. Um, so most websites these days don't have category pages. The categories are more just folders that hold all of your other pages. Um, so to add another page, you would just click on this up here. This is the add a page button. Um, we have lots of different templates here. Um, we'll get into these in a little bit more detail. Um, but for now, let's see, what one did I want to add? Um, well, actually, let me go back here and show you this real quick. Um, if you needed to change um, a page, like the What We Believe page from Published to make it a draft, um, you can change that here. So you would just highlight it and then click this button down here to make it a draft, and that'll change it to draft mode. That way you can get in there and you can start editing it um, while, so that people don't see it when you're doing that. Um, so now when we exit out of here, um, wait, which one was that? What we believed. Uh, oh, and save the changes. So now when we go out and refresh under about us, oh, it's still there. Oh, but it's, it's under draft. So if I was logged out as an administrator or if I was just a typical user using the website, this page wouldn't be there. Um, because I'm an administrator right now, it, it does appear. Um, so if I go back to pages, I can change that back to a published page so that anyone can see it. I could also delete a page if uh, I didn't need it anymore. Um, you can make it public or private. Um, so that just means um, if you have it private, you have to be logged in as a member to view it. Um, you can't just be any person showing up to the website seeing those things. Um, and that's useful in instances where you have um, like a, an acolyte schedule or something like that. You would want to protect the youth's names on your website, but you still want them to be able to access that information. So you would ask them to log in and then they could view that. Um, there's different page types that we have. Um, you'll see right now we have one called announcements. Where do I have that? Right here under news, we have announcements. Um, and if I go out here, you can see that it appears under the, the tab there. Um, but for now, I'm just going to delete that one, and I'll show you how to create an announcement page. So I'll hit delete. So now, um, to add the new page, um, we would want to add a feed page for our announcement pages. So I'll click on that, and this is our feed category here, um, the template. We'll hit create page, 
And now when you go back, you see it over here, and I'll type in announcements. I think I spelled that right. And I can drag that under news and hit save changes. And now when I exit out, it should appear back over here under news. But now you can see that it's empty. There's nothing under there. Um, and to show or to add announcements to this, um, to our feed page, uh, it's pretty easy. You just click on edit page. And again, you have to at least be a publisher to do this. Um, you would just type your uh, post here. Um, so I'll say upcoming Bible study. I spelled that wrong, sorry. You can add in the details about it here. I'll just put details. Um, you can add an image in, do any of that kind of stuff. Um, but then you would just hit create, and it adds the post down there for us. So now when I close out of edit page, it shows our post right there. Um, under feed pages, you can also um, change how many feeds uh, appear on this page. So I could change it to five if I didn't want so many showing up all at one time. And they can go back and view the other ones at any time, but those would be the first five that appear. Um, you can change your URL, your feed title, your meta description. Um, you can click here if you don't want to show your uh, post content. Um, so now when I save that and close, it'll just show the name and it doesn't show the details under it. Um, you can allow comments and you can click to moderate comments. Um, allowing comments um, allows people to um, start discussions on those posts. Um, and sometimes it can be good to moderate comments. Um, that means the uh, website administrator or the person in charge of this feed um, would have to approve the comments before they just appear on the website. Um, and that's good if you're having a feed that's available to the public, uh, but you just want to make sure that everything that's going on your website um, is, you know, okayed by someone in your church. Um, so that's the basics for um, feeds. They're pretty easy. You just click edit page and you can add a new one. Um, and they just keep popping right up there. Um, so now back under announcements, let's see. Um, edit page URL. Uh, I think I touched on all of that. Sorry, I just want to make sure I covered everything that I have in my notes. Um, there's many uses for feeds feed pages. Um, you could use them like we just did for announcements, but you could also do um, a sermon page where you post your sermon audio or video on here every week. Um, you could set up a blog if your pastor or someone in your church wants to share content throughout the week. Um, you could use it for prayer requests. Um, there's really countless ways you can use uh, feed pages, and uh, it's really just based on your creativity and how you would want to use them. Um, to view all of your different posts, um, you would go up to this post tab here, and you can see all of the posts that have uh, been shared somewhere. Um, if you accidentally uh, shared a post to the wrong feed, you could always change it from this area. Um, for instance, if this recognition post uh, wasn't actually a sermon, but it accidentally got shared on our sermon page, um, if it was actually a an announcement, you could change the feed by clicking it and then clicking change feed and setting it to announcements. And now it will be under the announcements page. So if I do that, it should pop right up here. And there you'll see it. Um, so it's an easy and quick way to view your um, posts that have been created and change them around if you need to or edit them if you need to do that. Um, so from this page you can publish them, you can change them to a draft, you can delete them, or you can change their feeds. Um, and you can just click on the name to actually view the post. Um, so next we're going to talk about mailing lists. And again, this is why um, we had to set Tamika to an administrator, um, because only administrators are able to see um, the mailing list. So to find your mailing list, you would go to settings, oh, sorry, excuse me, users, and click on mailing lists. Um, and we have to set this up as an administrator because unfortunately this feature could be abused. Um, so you would hope that whoever is um, responsible enough to be an administrator on your site would also be responsible enough to access an email list where they can email everyone in your congregation. 
Um, so by default, everyone comes with an everyone list, um, and this sends an email to everyone who's in your database um, that shared their email address with you. So we can click on that and hit a email, um, and it will pop up in your default uh, email client. Um, I'm waiting for that. Sorry, that's my schedule. Um, so now it pops up, and you can click on that, and you see that this it's got this weird text in there. Um, a bunch of numbers and letters dot training webinars at relay dot three sixty unite dot com, uh, and that's because at tr um, we use an email relay um, here at CPH that will have your emails sent to our servers, but then redistributed from us, um, and that just keeps it from looking like spam coming from you, um, so that people don't accidentally uh, mark you as spam and things like that. Um, lots of different email clients use that. Things People like MailChimp do the same kind of thing. Um, and you, these uh, numbers, this is called a GUID. It uh, stands for Globally, Unif or, excuse me, Globally, Globally Unique Identifier. Sorry, that's hard to say fast. Um, and so this, like I said, just sends out an, uh, an email to each individual on your list without making it look like a giant list of people. Um, so it redistributes it to all of the people within your list. Um, to create a mailing list, let me get rid of that, you can just type in a name here. So if I said Bible study, um, because I wanted to send information out to everyone in my Bible study, I could create that mailing list. Now if you click on it, you can select who all you want to be added into that. Um, or you can go down to the bottom and you can select a group even. So you can see on the side here there's these icons and there's one person next to the people's names. But if you scroll down to the bottom you see there's these group icons. Um, so we have this Bible study called Devote. I could click that and that adds everyone that's in that group to this list. Um, so I could save that and now when I um, email that list it'll send an email out to all of those different people. So it's a quick way to um, send information out to all of the people in your that you need to all at once and you can set up these groups um, if you need to email those people multiple times and you don't want to have to recreate the list every time. Um, so there's lots of ways to save time while using mailing lists. Um, next we're going to get into groups a little bit. Um, so we'll exit out of here. Let me go back to our home page. Um, to set up a group, you would have to go under the Pages tab. So we would click up here on Pages. Um, and this, the groups are initially set up by administrators, but they can be maintained by users even. Um, so to set up a group, um, you would click on the Add Page button again. And you'll see that there's this one here with the group icon. So you click on that, hit Create Page. And we'll create one called Bible Study. Um, and this is our study. Um, all of our information about our Bible study can be um, found here. There's different ways you can use groups for your Bible study. So I'll show some of those details now. Um, but to create the group, you would type in the name and hit Save Changes. And right now it's not in our menu. Um, these are our available menu items. So to make it in our menu on our home page, you would just slide it over to where you want it. I want it under Ministries, so I'll just slide it right to there. And then I would hit Save Changes. And hopefully it's going to save the changes. There we go. Now we can exit out and refresh. And oh, there it is. It already did it. Um, so now under Ministries, you'll see Bible Study. So if we click on that, it will take us to our group page. Um, and group pages can only be accessed by people who are logged into the website. Um, so for instance, I'll, I'll log out real quick. So let me go back to the home page. I'll show you. You can see Bible studies right there. But if I sign out and go back under there, it's suddenly gone. There's no Bible studies tab. Um, so you have to be logged in to be able to see that. Let me log in again. Uh, didn't work. There we go. All right, so now there it is because I'm logged in as a user. So I'll click on that. Um, and there's lots of different options here. 
um, to get this group set up, um, the administrator of the group, um, oh, which I am not logged in as the administrator of the group. Let me change that real quick. And you won't be able to do this from home. This is just a, a feature we have at CPH to be able to log in quickly to different users. So now let's see. Yep, there they are. Um, so the administrator of the group has a few more tabs on the side here than just a typical user would. Um, for instance, the edit this group tab. Um, so I'll click on that and I'll show you some of the details that you can get into here. Uh, you can change the title, the description. Um, you can add different pages. So for instance, if I wanted a notes page um, where you can upload the notes from your Bible study, you would hit add page and then click on it. And now it will appear over there. Um, you can uh, set up who is able to access these different pages. Um, so if you wanted your home page to, to let anyone see it, even people who aren't users, um, you could click home uh, everyone there. Um, if you want the discussion to be only people who are members of this group, um, that way they can feel comfortable sharing uh, content and things like that, you could change that one. Um, if you wanted events to be seen by only people logged in, as users, but even people who aren't logged or uh, members of this group, you could send that to only Unite users, um, and you could set the members um, showing who's in the group to members only. That way, the people who are in the group can see who else is in the group with them, um, but other people can't access that information. And you can uh, set it to uh, set up who can join the group. You can set it to anyone who is logged into the site or you can set it to only people who you've um, invited. So then you would hit update group. Um, and next you can also change some membership settings. Um, you can change things like how many notifications you get and how frequently you get them. Um, like I said, you have a discussion page here. Um, you have uh, a space where people can share ideas and topics and um, respond back and forth to each other. You can put announcements up on this page or prayer requests. Um, we created this notes page um, and to add notes, it's just like a typical page. Um, it shows everything that, uh, right now there's nothing on this page, but you could click on the edit page button um, and it allows you to uh, access the WYSIWYG editor again. Um, so now we could type in um, Bible study notes and you could highlight those, Oops, sorry. And then we could add a link to it, um, and you could link it to a page or a URL, but um, another cool feature is you can uh, link it to a file that users can download. So if you have a like a Microsoft Word document um, that you want people to be able to download, you could link to that file and upload it here, and then they would just have to click on that link to download that, uh, that Word file. Um, so it's a, a pretty quick and easy way to add link, links and things like that. Um, you can set up a, an event page. Um, this allows you to have different events for this Bible study. So if this Bible study was going to happen on Sunday mornings um, between the church service, we could double click on that date. Um, we would say Mark Bible study. Um, you can add it to different calendars if you wanted, uh, besides just the Bible study calendar. So if you also had um, like a, a classes calendar or you wanted to add it to worship or fellowship or something like that, you could add those in there and it will go to both of those calendars. But for now, we'll just do Bible study. Um, you can set the location. I'll say fellowship hall. Um, that way, when people get on the website, they can see what rooms are being used at what times. Um, they can know that maybe they don't have time to schedule that room. Um, you can change when it starts and when it ends. Um, we'll say it starts then, that date at 9.30 a.m. Why does that work? A.m. Um, it ends at 10.30 a.m. on that same day. You can set the event up to repeat, um, or you could set it up as an all-day event, or you could set it up to repeat. Um, and we'll say that this repeats every single week on Sundays. And we'll say it ends um, 
let's see how many weeks out would that be? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We'll say it ends on the 4th of December. That's an eight-week-long study on the Gospel of Mark, we'll say. Um, so we'll say Bible study in the description. Um, just to let people know what the, the Bible study is a part, uh, excuse me, and what the Bible study is about, uh, you would want to add a little more details than just Bible study, probably. Um, you can send out invitations to people in your church. Um, so if I want to invite different people that are members of this group, um, I could select them all. Right now there's just one member in this group, um, so it wouldn't really do anything. Um, but you can send out invitations to them. You can send out reminders also, and this is helpful. Um, if you have a lot of people in your church that tend to forget events coming up, you could send out a reminder an hour before, a day before, a week before, um, any of these different numbers. Um, we'll just say an hour. Then you would create the event, and you'll see it will populate onto this page. Um, so now, when you go to your main church calendar, um, it may not appear right away. So let's take a look. Yeah, you'll see it's not there right away. Um, however, Bible study does show up there. Um, so to make it show up, make those uh, dates show up, you would go back to your calendar settings and you should see Bible study under here. Um, so on this it says it's visible, it's not visible. Oh, and excuse me, you wouldn't change it here. Um, for groups, you can't change the, uh, the group settings from this tab. This is just for the uh, normal calendars. To change the group settings for the calendar, um, you would go back to the group and um, go to edit this group. And we have the, um, the events set to unite members only. Um, so we could set it to public. That way anyone who gets on our website can see that event on the church calendar. So now if we go to the church calendar, and I might have to refresh. Hmm. Oh, I'm not sure why it's not showing up. I might be doing it wrong. Uh, but it should pop up. Oops, sorry about that. I'm hitting all over the place. Calendar. There they are. I was in the wrong month. So now our Bible studies will appear on our calendar. Um, and within the calendar, you can set up however many uh, calendars you want. Um, to view. So if you were a church member who just wanted to see what Bible studies were coming up, you could have that one checked and get rid of all the others. Um, you could also set up Board of Elder meetings if you were a Board of Elder. Um, if you were on the Altar Guild, you could add those ones in to see when that meets. Um, so it's easy to, to change around which ones you want to see and um, get all of the information that's pertinent to you. Um, there's the, the month view like this where you can see the whole calendar view. Or you could change it to the week view um, to see week by week what's happening. Um, and this is helpful for especially like a pastor who is um, doing visits to families and homes and things like that. They can pull up their calendar and quickly view those things. Uh, let's see. I think that's, uh, that's a good overview of um, groups. There's not a whole lot else I wanted to get to on those. We're running out of time, so I want to get to um, our members' uh, date directory. So let's go over to that. Um, under my About tab, I have my Members tab. Um, and this only appears, again, if you're logged in as a user. So I would click on that, and that takes me to this Members directory. Um, and you can see lots of information um, about the people in your church. Um, you can add images in for each person in your family. Um, if you click on the family name, it'll show you all of the people within the family um, and give you information about the whole household. Um, you could also click on an individual person and find information about them, like what groups they're part of, um, their email addresses, and their, their address and their work number and their cell number, and all of that kind of stuff. Um, you can edit these profiles, um, and this all back backloads into Church 360 members or Shepherd staff. So if you edit it here, it'll also change it on that software. Um, 
So it's a good way to free up the secretary's time by not making them be in charge of all of this information, um, but letting them allow the members of your church to update that information and add it back in. Um, you can also see the recent activity that this person's uh, done. He hasn't really been part of anything or sent out any emails or anything like that, but that's where you would see that. Um, let's see, is there anything else I want to get to with that? Um, not really. I th the, uh, the members database on your website just kind of becomes a hub for your uh, church members so that um, rather than having to call the church office anytime they want information like this, they can just go to the website and find um, people's phone numbers and things like that if they need to get a hold of them. Um, and it's very similar to like the old church directories and you can even use this information to create a church directory if you wanted um, the solid paper. Um, so there's lots of cool ways to use this kind of stuff. Um, and that's, I think, a good overview of uh, Church 360 Unite. So now let's switch back over and um, I'll try and answer any questions you might have. Um, so if you have a question, uh, go ahead and ask it. I see we have one already. Oops, I do not do that. Uh, question is, can a member set a do not send email flag and not receive any emails? Um, the way you would do that, uh, I guess there's two possibilities. Um, so you could either just not add your email address in um, to the website. Uh, where am I? Oh, members. So under the member directory, um, if Dave didn't want to receive emails, he could just take his email address out of there, um, delete those out or to set them uh, to unlisted there. Um, so if he had one that he wanted to use, like his personal email address, but he didn't want things sent to his work address, but he wanted to have it in there just so that the church knows what it is, he could set that to unlisted. Um, now from group, the group area, um, you could also do that. So if you wanted general emails from the church, but you didn't want to get an email every time um, the group something came out, you could go to your membership settings under the group and you could set um, send me an email only when the leader makes an announcement or don't send me any email notifications from this group. Um, so there's a few different ways you can um, change your notifications and your emails and things like that. Um, great question. Another question is, is the church directory private? Um, yes, so if you are, it's private to anyone outside of your church. Um, so if you are a member of the church and you have a login to the website, you would be able to access it. But anyone who can't log into the website, um, so for instance, let me exit out of here. Right now under About Us, you can see members. But if I was to log out, um, and I was just a random person that showed up to the website like a guest, it wouldn't be under the About Us tab. Um, it disappears from there. I uh, hope that answers your question. Uh, any other questions about anything we went over or things I, I missed that you were interested in or anything like that? Let's see. Oh, great question. Are the template pages included or do we need to create them? Um, the 10 templates that we have, let me log back in so you can see them, they're all included with your website. Um, so when you purchase Church 360 Unite, um, you'll be able to see all of these different themes um, immediately and use any of them for free. Um, so these 10 are free of charge, they come with uh, the software. And you can set up all of these different templates. These are things that uh, we've created and um, templates we've designed. You can also add in your own images and backgrounds if you want to change them from these. But these come from us um, with the website builder. Great question. Uh, another question is, if the email is unlisted, does the email display for the member? Uh, I don't know if I know exactly. I would, my assumption would be no. Um, if they're unlisted, they wouldn't receive an email. Um, and, it, oh, and it wouldn't show up on their, um, on the database. So I think the administrator would see um, their email address but a, another user wouldn't see that email address if it's unlisted. Um, I'll try and find that information out and uh, 
get you that information for sure, but I believe that's how it would work. Uh, there's a question on uh, moving info from Shepherd Staff to Church uh, 360 Unite. Um, that would be a great question for our tech support team. Um, they they could give you the directions on how to do that if you were interested in doing that. Um, I, I don't necessarily know all of the behind the scenes kind of stuff of um, transferring it. Let me log in so I can show you where you would do that. Um, oops. That would be under our settings and then integration. Um, and this will give you all of the details on how to do that. Um, and if it, if the directions don't answer all of your questions, um, you could always give them a call and they'll walk you through the steps and they can even log into your computer if you need them to and they can set it up for you. So our tech support team would be um, a great resource for that and I'll give you, your, give you their number here in a second. Uh, another question. Um, question is, do you set the tasks of the roles or are they automatic? Um, the roles are just uh, kind of like permissions. Um, so what, depending on what role you assign to someone um, allows them to have different permissions on the website. So an administrator has permission to see all of these different uh, tabs up here. They're the only ones that can see like the settings tab or the, uh, the users tab. Um, a designer would have access to the theme and uh, pages and posts, but they wouldn't be able to access users or themes or I think they wouldn't be able to access activity. Um, a typical user, um, they would only be able to, uh, they wouldn't see this bar at all. This just wouldn't appear up here, so they wouldn't be able to access any of this information. Um, and a designer, or excuse me, a publisher would be able to see these, I think these three actually, these three tabs here. So they could post, uh, uh, add posts, they can add pages, and they can see the different activity on the website. So hopefully that answers that for you. Uh, um, another question, if you want to send an email to all members, would you do this from the website or from uh, people in 360? Uh, I think maybe you're asking from uh, the people view in Church 360 members. Um, I'll just assume that for right now. Uh, you could do it from either, actually. Um, so if you were on the website and you would want to send a, uh, an email to everyone, uh, you would just click the e Everyone button and hit Email. So I, I think the mailing list um, kind of makes it a really easy process. Um, in Church 360 members, you could also click um, on everyone and send them an email. So you could do it from either area. Good question. Uh, let's see. Um, another question is on the mass mailings, um, so the mailing list, can a mailing list be set up for the pastor by the administrator and then allow the pastor to send emails using the list set up by the administrator? Um, so the only way to do that would be to make the pastor themselves an administrator. Um, and like I said earlier, you can you have two administrator accounts um, no matter what plan you purchase. Um, so you'll always have one that uh, you can have for like the, the church secretary, uh, but you could also add the pastor in as an administrator um, because only administrators can access the users area. So if you wanted your pastor to be able to send out uh, mail lists, you would have to set them up as an administrator of the website. Good question. Uh, another question, is there any social media integration available? Uh, that's a good question. I'm sure there is. I'd have to find an answer on that and I'll, I'll reply that answer to you. Um, so after this webinar is over, I'll, I'll find that answer from someone and send you an email about that. Good question. Any other questions from anyone? While I'm waiting, I'll, I'll pull the, uh, this information up. Um, if you would like to try the software out, you can start a, three, or a free 30-day trial by going to 360unite.com. Um, 
and you can test it out and see if it works for your congregation uh, and kind of play with all the tools and things like that. Um, and if you would like any support uh, or if you have questions later on that you can't think of right now, um, you can always send me an email or give me a call or you can contact our software sales support team um, and they can answer those questions for you. Um, and you've got their information right there. Um, again, if you want to try the free trial, you just go to 360unite.com. Let's give another minute or two to see if we have any other questions. Uh, the question is, is there a service that allows anyone from Concordia to build a website for the church? Um, so it seems like you're asking if someone from here could uh, kind of do the design and things like that for the church. Um, I don't know if there's anything set up like that right now, but you could always call the sales team um, and kind of talk that out with them, and they may be able to give you an answer on that. Um, I don't know if we've done that before, but I'm sure we'd be willing to work with the church and um, help them get that set up. Um, however, the, the software is uh, designed um, to be able to be used by pretty much anyone, even if you don't have lots of design skills. Um, so you should be able to get in there and uh, tweak it to at least get you started. Um, but again, you could contact our sales team and talk to them, and we may be able to work something out on that. Um, another question is, how do you tell who is an administrator? Um, and that goes back to the um, users page. Um, so whoever sets up the, your account with us um, would probably, they would get, um, they would be logged in as an administrator to begin with. Um, so when you contact our sales team, they'll set you up as an administrator. Um, and then if you didn't always want to be the administrator, you can go in here. Um, and you can change it to someone else and then take yourself off from administrator. So right now Luke is set up as an administrator on this site, so I could click his name if he no longer wanted to be an administrator, and I could change it to something else, like a uh, user or designer. Um, and you could change someone else to administrator. Um, so if you had your pastor that wanted to be an administrator, you could add their email address in here and all that, and then send them an invitation to be an administrator. Um, so I guess the answer to your question is uh, you, you would know because our sales team would set you up as one. Um, and then whoever's in charge of the website would set up um, everyone else that would be an administrator. hope that answers it and doesn't make it too confusing. Again, if, you, if you'd like to ask our sales uh, team about any of this kind of stuff, they can answer those questions for you. Um, if you think of a question later on, send me an email or give me a call. I'll give another minute or two just to see if we have any other questions come up. Here's the uh, free trial again. You can get in there and test out the software and see if it would work for your congregation by going to 360unite.com. Then here's our information. Again, call or email me with any of your questions. If you can't think of one right now, but it, if it pops in your head 10 minutes later and uh, you, you didn't miss me, you can always contact me at any time. Or you could contact our uh, software sales team and they could answer these kind of questions also. All right, well, if we don't have any other questions, I guess we can wrap up a little early for today. Um, I appreciate you being here, and I hope I was able to answer any of your questions um, and help you see how Church 360 Unite can um, help you to communicate better with your congregation um, and take some tasks off your to-do list. Um, so I hope this was helpful, and I hope you have a great day. Thank you so much for joining me, and have a good one.